So, I was looking for a brand new 3D printer, something that I could pick up and put on my desk and immediately start printing and I can also recommend to anybody that's trying to get into 3D printing without needing to do any modifications or anything crazy. And I stumbled upon the Kai Wu Tycoon and the Tycoon Max and I said, this is the one. It had all the bells and whistles and it was under a thousand bucks and I said, this has to be the printer and was I in for an adventure because the first thing that happened was basically Amazon sent me the regular Tycoon after I paid for the Max, but that has nothing to do with Kaiwu. And then it all began. Thanks for watching another episode of Breaking Elegance. I'm your host, Angel, and let's jump right into my adventure. So putting this printer together is pretty simple. All you need to do is put on four screws to attach the actual bed onto the gantry and boom, you're ready to go. Now, there's nothing easier than that. And that's really what actually called my name when it came to getting this printer and being able to recommend it to other people. But when it goes past that, you're going to have a little bit more fun. And by fun, I mean like you're going to need to actually get your printer working properly with Cura. And this would be simple if they actually had the proper machine settings for the printer. When I actually received the printer, I couldn't even find a Cura profile at all on their website. But there is currently a Cura profile available for the Max and for the regular Tycoon on their website. So I got to commend them as either I was blind or they, they're keeping up with their website and adding new things to it at all times, which I really like to see. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and take an overview of their website. All right, so this is a Kaiwu 3D website, and if you go over to their accessories, which is something I really like to see when it comes to um, these 3D printing um, companies, is anything you need for the, your printer or anything you need in order to upgrade or maintain the printer is available directly from the manufacturer in case you want to get those components. So here we obviously have a little bit of PLA up here at the top, but as you can see, you have the linear rails, um, and we also have an upgraded um, um, hot end so you can upgrade to a high temperature um, hot end here it goes up to 300 degrees C and of course if you get that you will also need this enclosure here so that way you can actually use this properly for high um, temperature filament and obviously we got a PAI bed here and a lot of things that you would need in order to maintain or upgrade your printer. So they're all available here. And now let's jump over to the technical help and show you how that looks. So this is the Tycoon Max firmware and upgrade manual. And all of their printers are available here in case you need to actually grab a manual or get some of the, um, the functionality working with your printer. Now what I would like to see, let's go ahead and click on the Tycoon here. I would like to see is them upgrade this operation manual because once you open that operation manual you might or might not notice if you never used the 3d printer before that there are things actually missing from this operations manual so i'm going to scroll down i just wanted to also mention that this does not come with a copy of cura for your mac if you're running mac os you could definitely get that over from ultimaker's website i will put a link in the description below in case you are running on a Mac like I am, it's no problem, it's not a big deal. But you can scroll down and I will show you where we will run into an issue. The issue is going to be after you finish installing Cura, which is pretty simple and you can pretty much fly through it. I don't know if you will really need to really read through all of this. Just get to this portion where it says um, custom uh, FFF printer that's for your um, actual printer settings so you will click on that and you will select the proper um, machine size which here this is for the Tycoon is 240 by 240 by 230 and if you have the actual um, max it's going to be 300 by 300 by 230 it would be nicer if this printer was a little bit more a little bit bigger on the Z for the max size but hey this is what they decided to go with and I don't usually print much taller than that, but that's besides the point. Let's jump into the nozzle settings. You got 1.75, so make sure you do that. And it does come with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so select that. But the big issue is here in your start G code. Your start G code is going to be very important. 
On my start G code, I actually added a line in the corner, very similar to what the enders do. And this is just in case you have anything on your nozzle or some oozing or something like that. It basically will wipe it onto the side of your print bed and they did not add anything like that. So the machine settings are pretty terrible here. And I believe these are really important settings, especially if you wanna get a good first layer, which is one of the most important layers when you're actually 3D printing. So not having a good G code, including this doesn't have a G29 code, which would be very important since this does use uh, auto bed leveling and there are no knobs for you to actually manually bed level your printer on this printer. So it's very important that this printer bed levels itself. So G29 would definitely need to be on there. I don't understand why it's not in this manual, but I will be giving you a link in the description below and it will show you my actual machine settings for this printer, which include the G29 code and everything I believe that you need for your start G code. Now your NG code is not as important as your start G code and what's in here should work perfectly fine. And that's pretty much all you need in order to set up this printer properly. I would say give it a go with the G code uh, that I have down below and use the profile that they have upgraded and you should be ready to rock and roll. So I wish that I could tell you that that was the end and that my printer was working fine and that everything is all good and ready to go. But unfortunately for me, and as I did see on uh, actual uh, forum post, I had a piece of filament actually stuck inside of the extruder of the Tycoon Max, not of the actual regular Tycoon. So I'm guessing this did not happen to every single one of the printers that were shipped out, but this one did have that issue and someone else seems to have also had that issue. And it was a pain to actually get out of the actual printer. You would need to take down the entire basically assembly for your print head, which would be getting under the actual shroud, taking off the knob and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. So let's go ahead through those steps. So the first thing you're going to need to do is take off four screws. Two of them are on the right hand side of the printer. And then you're going to flip it over to the other side and go to the left hand side of the printer. And there are two screws on that side of the actual uh, shroud that keeps everything together. After you get those screws off, you also need to take off the knob. There's two screws on the actual knob. You need to actually loosen them up. You don't need to fully take them off. And then you can finally get that shroud off that's covering the entire hot end. Now, what I did notice about this hot end is that it looks very similar to a upgraded Creality, like the extruder and the actual um, hot end are all one. So it's almost like they took the Creality metal extruder and uh, basically merged it and built it into one um, actual direct drive extruder, which is a pretty cool design. I'm not going to bash on it. And the only thing I wish that they did is actually upgrade it to a dual gear version of that extruder, which actually exists. My Ender 6 came with one. And if you take a look here, I will show you how the Ender 6 one looks. And maybe you can imagine how this would look on this printer. The Ender 6 one is blue, but I have seen this extruder in red, which is the reason that it really reminded me of the upgraded extruder for the Ender series, but those are Bowden. So if they took that, basically the Bowden design and made it direct drive with the dual extruder, it would be really awesome. Maybe in the future iteration of this printer mm -hmm. that would happen and also an upgraded fan duct. Well, let's keep on going and finish taking apart this extruder just in case you actually need to get your filament jam out. After you go and you take this apart, there's a screw on the upper left hand corner that holds down the tensioner that spring you need to remove that after you remove that there is one screw right behind on the upper right hand corner that you need to remove and then after you remove that one there is uh, one screw on the fan that you also need to loosen up so that you can remove the entire um, unit after you do that um, now you can actually get to the bottom of the um, hot end there are two screws on the bottom of this heat block and you loosen those out. You take those off and now you can actually get to your heat break and to the hot end. You should be able to freely um, move that. Once you can move that around, if you have a jam, you should be able to get that jam out easier while this is out. Might need to heat up the actual hot end and stick something through it. But this is the easiest way to actually go ahead and um, get this these components loose so that you can get to 
the components and uh, clean them out or service them. Now, for a brand new user, this would not be an easy task. And it's something that I actually um, would expect a little bit better from uh, quality assurance and quality control over at Kaiwu. And I expect that they would probably fix this in the future. But it looks like they probably tested this printer because I found a piece of red filament in there. And um, it was just jammed in there. And that's what caused me to not be able to originally even use this printer at all out of the box. So I removed that, I got to printing, and the second problem I had was with getting a gigantic spaghetti monster. And what I mean is this spaghetti monster was created by, by not properly setting the Z off step from the factory. So the way that this printer works is that it uses a 3D touch, not a BL touch, which is pretty much a, a, a copy, a replica of a BL touch, which is fine because I've tested the 3D touch before and it works okay. Um, a lot of people say they're not as accurate as the BL touch, but BL touches are not very inexpensive. So I'm guessing putting that into this printer would cost a little bit more and go into the actual um, uh, you know, back end of putting this together at a affordable price. But this printer does come in at uh, around four to six hundred dollars, depending on which model you get. And um, I would expect a little bit better uh, quality assurance and not needing to go through any of these steps in order to actually get the printer to work. The Z offset was incorrect and I just printed in midair and that's how I got the spaghetti monster uh, printing. After I figure, figured out that the Z offset was completely incorrect, I went ahead and I corrected it. Um, luckily, I understand how these things work. And boom, I did get some prints out of both of these printers. For the fan duct, it's too close to the actual hot end and it is warped and melted um, around the edges on both of these printers on the tycoon and the tycoon max and if kai Wu sees this video i would really really suggest that they redesign the fan duct one it's a little bit too high and aiming more at the actual extruder and not aiming at the actual um parts so that needs to be heavily modified it needs to be um not it, it needs to be modified and it should be aiming a little bit lower towards the parts so you can get better cooling to on the parts and they can print properly. Also, it it feels like the angle that it is actually um, aiming from, it's, uh, it's towards the back and that's a little bit um, weird. It would be better if it was actually pointing the airflow from the side so it can uh, distribute a little bit more evenly no matter where it is actually printing. A lot of printers do this from the front, but I think that the best um, way to cool your parts would be from the side. So that way, when you're getting these prints, they're getting um, airflow at all times. I just want everyone to have the best experience with this printer. So therefore, I am putting all of these things together so that it can help you get the best functionality out of this printer. Uh, besides that, here are some of the actual test prints that I got after I actually did all the adjustments. Uh, this is a Benchy from the Tycoon right here. And as you can see, there are a little bit of uh, spots here where the actual um, uh, print looks a little bit deformed. And that's something I really can't get rid of without modifying this printer and getting better part cooling. And as you can see, it is extremely, very similar results with the Benchy that I actually got from the Tycoon Max. They're almost identical deformities, and that shows me that it is coming from a actual physical um, uh, component and not some sort of profile setting. So the fans are identical, the print heads are identical on both of these printers, and the deformities are pretty much on par with each other on both printers. And I expected a little bit better from a printer in this price range. Uh, and I would hope they actually go ahead and modify this. With a little bit more quality assurance and a little bit more finesse, I feel like a Kaiwu could actually nail this and put out probably one of the best printers that you would be able to actually use out of the box without doing any modifications. 
with a few little tweaks like the fan duct, which can be easily tweaked. And I think they can even make a STL file or some sort of file where you can print it and replace the duct on the current printers. And that would give you better parts cooling. Then maybe this could be the absolute best printer available on the market for anyone that's just getting into 3D printing with the minimum amount of needing to put the thing together. So they're almost there. They did actually upload the Cura profile and that's available now. So uh, kudos to that. But the machine settings are just as important, if not more important, because how are you going to use the bed leveling um, properly without having the proper G codes to start? Also, if they wanted to, they can add um, an actual line that draws out in the beginning of the actual print because sometimes there's stuff on your nozzle. So by drawing a line before you actually start printing, like on the enders, this usually can co um, cost you less problems and headaches. And I think those two little things can be added easily and it would basically put this printer at the top of the food chain when it comes to 3d printers within that price range now this printer I, it gave me a nostalgia of looking at something like a taz by lalsbot because it's basically the same form factor if you actually look at the printer and that's pretty good because that is a very expensive printer and you're getting that form factor out of the kaiwu tycoon and that's more than welcome I did see a couple of, uh, of other videos that mentioned that the original version of this printer was not grounded properly. I could confirm that mine is grounded properly and so is the regular Tycoon. So this is version 2.0 and they are working their way up there and they look like they really care and they're doing whatever they can, but not everything is all good and dandy. With all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that like button because that really does help out the channel. And like always, you guys have a great one.